Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop and it's repair time again. And this time I've got another oscilloscope. Yep, kind of been inundated with oscilloscopes recently, so I'm just working my way through them. And this one's a Rapid Electronics 7022 digital oscilloscope. Now, I do believe this particular scope was sold under different brands, one of them being a BK Precision Model 2522B, and perhaps some other ones as well. Now, it's just a cheap 20 megahertz digital oscilloscope and it was kindly donated by Aaron down in England so thank you very much for that and let's see if we can affect the repair. Now Aaron did say it does power up on the analog side of the scope works it's the digital side that's not working so let's just power it up straight away he did say it powers up and let's see what we can see so let's just power it up now I've got the lighting turned off in the workshop just so we can see the CRT a little bit better. And we've got a trace. Yes, we've got something there. I would say the analog side is indeed working. Now I don't know too much about how to operate the digital side of this scope. It's enabled here and all these controls here are in relation to the actual digital side. So let's put it in digital mode. Ah, yes. Look at that. That's definitely not right. So I'm not sure what most of these controls do. We've got a reset at the end. A, signal, a single button. Yeah, it does seem pretty messed up. Definitely shouldn't look like that. And back to analog again. Perfect. Okay, let's open it up and take it from there. Wow, it's immaculate inside. It does have a small fan in the back, so I was expecting a little bit of dust. But no, it's absolutely immaculate even in and around the CRT, which I'm going to steer well clear of today. Now we've got the front panel controls here, so we've obviously got the vertical and horizontal control board uh, interfacing to the front panel, and we've got a large circuit board at the back. Now it does seem to have a lot of dip ICs in it, uh, especially a couple of 40 pin ones over here. So I'm guessing that's the digital board over there and the rest of it's analog. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at the analog board. I can see one, two, three, four, five screws holding it in. So let's uh, take them off and just have a look at the other side of the board. Back in the day, I did used to use a digital oscilloscope not unlike this one and it too failed on the digital side and we never ever got around to repairing it so that's why i said to Aaron, i would actually like to try repairing this one because the digital side was faulty right I've got a couple of uh, large electrolytics here. I'm actually going to put my meter across them first just to make sure they're discharged. I'm not expecting a high voltage, but yeah, minus one or one. Yeah, 0.5. I think that's good enough. So I think we can quite safely get the fingers in and around that circuit board. Now there's a CRT business end down there so I'm going to steer clear of that and there is the digital board and it's pretty clean we've got a PAL chip down there a lot of 74 series logic uh, not too sure what those are I was half expecting a processor of some kind but it's got a number I don't recognise, an ITT part, a UVC 3130-10. If I can find the data sheet for that, I'll put it on screen. And there is actually two of them, channel 1, channel 2. 
we've got a buffer chip there, an HCT244, and we've got a couple of other chips here. Not sure if those are RAM. Perhaps they are. Sony Park CXK5816PN. And you've got some CMOS 4000 series, 74 series. We've got a GAL over here, and there's a couple of chips and sockets, an AD7533. Is that the A to D, perhaps? I'm not seeing anything else that'll stand out to be the analogue to digital converter. Looks like we've got an oscillator circuit up here, with the crystal right next to our 74LSO2. And quite often, back in the day, we would put the uh, 74 series chip that we were using uh, alongside the crystal to create a base frequency in a socket because sometimes it would be a little bit temperamental. Different brands would oscillate better than others, sometimes double oscillating, so perhaps that's what they've done there. Not too sure why the buffer ICs are in sockets, that shouldn't really be a problem. And wow, I've spotted something straight away. Let me zoom in. Those two electrolytic capacitors there are bulging, especially this one here. So I wonder if that's what the cause of the problem is. Yep, we've got a few regulators here. We've got a 7805, that's a plus 5. We've got another 7805. And we've got a 7905 here. So that's a plus and minus 5 volt supply. That's probably what those two caps are there. So if the 5 volt supply is not working great, that could indeed cause the symptoms that we're getting, a dead digital side. So I'm going to go and remove those caps and change them out for new ones straight away. And there's the caps there. And you can see, if I can just align it properly, yep, yeah, definitely bulging, but they're not leaking, luckily. And they are both 2200 microfarad, 25 volt. Wow, 195 microfarad. Unbelievable. Supposed to be 2200. And the other one. 145 microfarad. Wow. And look at the ESR. 12 ohms. So that digital circuitry within the scope was basically getting a very, very rough 5 volt supply. Now, that two regulators there, that'll be the two capacitors there that I just changed. But where is the decoupling capacitor for this 5 volt regulator? Well, it's not on this board, but there is a few other electrolytic small ones anyway, dotted around. But I don't think I'll change them out at the moment. I think what I'll do now is power up and let's just see what we get with those two large ones changed out. So I'll put some of the screws back in because it is because it is required to earth some of those pads to the chassis. I'll put one at one this end and one at the other end. Right, let me reposition for the power up. Okay, let's power up. And I shall put in my sine wave again. That's analog. And let's switch it over to digital. Wow! Oh, it's worse! Ah, but wait a minute. 
No! We're in the storage setting, so that's the digital side. I wonder if that's working. Back to analogue again. Yes, that's working. You can see the A to D conversion there. If I put it back to analogue, you can see it's a lot straighter there because it's analogue. Put it to digital and you can see it's digitised. I don't know what the A to D is in terms of a number of bits, but you can certainly see the A to D conversion there. So I've got the single button pressed in and next to that's a reset button. Now, I haven't looked at the manual as ever. And it looks like if I press reset, that'll force another A to D conversion of the analog signal. And if I take off the input, yes, it's working. And if I take another reset, I should get nothing because I've got no input. So the digital side is now working. And that weird waveform when I first powered it up is probably just junk that was in the RAM when I powered it up. It required a reset to clear that. So with the single button out, I think that will be continuous. And you can see it flickering a little bit. That's it taking a new sample. So I wonder if I take this out now, will it disappear? Yes. Signal's gone. Perfect. I'm actually going to go and measure the 5 volt supply just to make sure those regulators are operational. That's your minus 5 volts. And that's the plus 5 volts. Perfect. And the other 5 volt regulator. Yep, 5 volts spot on. Okay, let's put it back together again. Now there are some other large electrolytics on the board on the underside. However, I'm not going to go near them today. I'm going to let this high voltage uh, on the CRT dissipate fully before I go anywhere near them. To be fair, they don't look like they're bulging. There's at least three that I can see and they're completely flat topped so they look okay. And the scope is running. Now I'm going to hold on to this scope, so in the future I might just go back in and replace those caps. And there's also some down here, looks like we've maybe got another regulator and a couple of smaller electrolytics, again they just look okay visibly. So I'm not going to go near them until this CRT is dissipated. And there it is, powered up again. And, yep, digital's working okay. And I've got it on single, so I'll just capture another waveform every time I press the button. And the pre-trigger here, I'll set that to 25% and do another capture. Yep. And 50%. Yep, you can see that there changing. And 75% with them both in. Yep, so it's obviously capturing the start of the waveform at a different position depending on the pre-trigger there. A small demonstration of roll mode. I'm back on the analogue uh, mode at the moment and I've got a 1 hertz sine wave coming in and obviously you can see that there. If I now enable uh, digital mode with the roll mode enabled and I've moved the time base back then that's what you get. If I put it back to analog you'll see the difference. Well, analog you're not going to see any historical data as it scans across there. But enable digital mode a digital scope will come into its own. You've still got the same frequency going up and down here, one hertz, but you can see the historical trace in memory. Brilliant. So thanks for Aaron for donating this scope to the channel. Didn't take much to fix it mind you, 
but sometimes an easy fix is welcomed. So thanks for watching and remember you can always comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel grow. There's plenty more repair videos on my channel from the simple to the complex. Check them out and thanks for watching.